Do you yearn for the good old days when having a BlackBerry phone in your pocket singled you out as a successful business person? And did you find the recent Key 2 a bit too much? This is the BlackBerry Key 2 LE, and it strips away a lot of those high-tech features from the Key 2 and returns back to basics for BlackBerry. How back to basics are we talking about? Well, this is a hybrid almost. It's not quite as techy as the Key 2, but it's not as basic as, say, a BlackBerry Curve from a decade ago. Let's talk about some of the things you've lost first. The big difference between the Key 2 and the Key 2 LE is there's no longer the capacitive keyboard. The keylets are actually a little bit smaller. This is a 10% reduction in size over the Key 2's keyboard. And because you don't have the capacitive aspect, there's no flicking words onto the screen as you type. And it's a little bit of a different experience. It is smaller and it does feel smaller. The phone itself is not all metal. You've got a metal look chassis. It's very clever, actually. It's extremely convincing as metal, but it's not metal. And the rear cover has got a different texture to it, slightly different to the regular Key 2. All of this makes the phone a little bit lighter. It's much more comfortable to hold. It's not quite so top heavy when you're trying to type on the keyboard like this. So it's not an unpleasant experience. It is, however, a little bit different. If we have a look when we go into a note here, what we found is without the capacitive keyboard to flick words onto the screen as you type, we've become more accustomed accustomed to using both keyboards. So you have your virtual keyboard up here and you have your, your physical keyboard down below. And we found a, a combination of the two works rather well. You can still flick words onto the screen using the virtual keyboard, just not with the physical keyboard. It's also much easier to just go in and change screens to get your punctuation and your grammar correct. This combination of the two works rather smoothly and it speeds up the typing process, particularly if you're a newcomer. However, what it also does is minimize the visual, visual, visual aspect of the screen. You've got all of a sudden two keyboards and only a little bit at the top to look through. Whether you like that or not is going to depend on how much you adore typing on the physical keyboard. These are still matte touch, just like the key two and not like the key one. So it's a very pleasurable typing experience. You just have to get used to the fact that you're typing on a keyboard. Like the key two, there's the speed key, which you can see just down here. This is a shortcut key. So you hold it down, you assign a, another key to give you a shortcut. For example, here we use F to open Facebook and it's as fast as that. You don't need to go looking for the app. You don't need to leap out of another app. There's a crucial point. You can just hit the two buttons and you're into your app. You can set that up for every key on the keyboard so you can have as many shortcuts as you'd like. And it's a really good way of doing things. Really pleasant experience for typing and for zipping through the Android operating system. What hasn't changed is that this is a BlackBerry and that means it's super secure. This runs Android, Android 8.1, sadly, not Android 9, but it's got all of BlackBerry's technical expertise behind the software, ensuring it's extremely secure. Android quite often isn't uh, known for its security, uh, possibly unreasonably, but BlackBerry ensures that you are getting a safe and secure experience with its Key 2 LE. There's also a ton of BlackBerry's own special apps and features. Just a couple of these. This comes with Firefox Focus pre-installed as uh, your alternative browser. And this provides private browsing, which can be secured by your fingerprint, which is a really nice um, way of browsing privately for whatever you, you're going to be browsing, browsing privately for, we don't really want to know, but whatever you want to do, you can keep it behind your password protected 
wall and that works elsewhere too. Blackberry Locker, which we also saw on the Key 2, keeps much of your, many of your documents and photos hidden privately inside this area. And again, as you saw there, I need to use my fingerprint and the sensor is hidden in the space bar here to open that up. So nobody else is gonna find your work documents or extremely important material that you don't just want anybody who happens to pick up your unlocked phone to be able to access. So it's a really nice feature. Beyond that, there are security checks that you can do using BlackBerry's DTEC system. This looks at the apps that you've got installed. It looks at um, the different things that you've been doing in your phone to see whether there are any security aspects you should be worried about. All of these things work together. They all work very smoothly. We never have a problem with BlackBerry's own software, although there is quite a lot of it. It's a great business phone. Whether you would want many of these features as a private user, we're not convinced. They do work very well if you share your phone, if you've got kids who you don't want suddenly going into your business email. It's a, a really nice feature, but we're not 100% convinced regular people are going to use them that often. So how about the hardware changes? This is a cheaper phone than the Key 2. It's $450, that's about $200, $250 less than the regular Key 2. We told you about the changes to the body, it's no longer metal, that saves some cost. The screen is the same, it's a high resolution 4.5 inch LCD, the same one you'll find on the, the Key 2, no longer has the capacitive keyboard, and there's a processor change. It's a Snapdragon 636 processor in here with four gigabytes of RAM you get 32 gigabytes of storage and there's a micro SD card slot hidden in the SIM card tray here. There's also a change for the camera. It's still dual lens, but it's a 13 megapixel and a five megapixel lens. So there, the performance is not great. You're not gonna be taking this out and taking stunning pictures like you would with many other phones. And arguably, the Key 2 actually has a way better camera than this, particularly in low light. It does still shoot um, portrait style bokeh shots, but it takes its time to do so and it doesn't like low light. So do not treat this phone as a camera phone. This is a business phone primarily. Around the front is an eight megapixel selfie cam, which like the back camera is not fantastic. All of these things will do, but none of them are reasons that you would be buying the phone probably in the first place. It's the keyboard, it's the software and the privacy and the security aspects of BlackBerry that is obviously the main draw. To summarize, Key 2 LE, cheaper than the Key 2, not as technically as impressive as the Key 2. You still have all of the staple BlackBerry stuff that you're gonna love, the security, the privacy, the keyboard. Should you buy it over the Key 2? No, there's nothing here that is better than the Key 2 and there are quite a few aspects that are much worse than the Key 2. Yes, you're gonna save some money, but you're going to be frustrated when you buy this and think that you're getting a modern BlackBerry because this feels like a callback to Blackberries of old, whereas the Key 2 feels like a modern forward-looking BlackBerry smartphone. This is the BlackBerry Key 2 LE.